Man, you really creeped us out. In the mid to late 1960s to the early 1970s, a man known only as Zodiac terrorized the San Francisco Bay Area. He taunted police by sending both letters and ciphers to local press, which frightened the public. In this documentary, we're not going to be going over every single detail from every murder. However, what we're going to do is go through a few key points of evidence and facts that I believe when looked at through a logical lens will finally show and prove who the man who called himself Zodiac really was. So I was always under the belief that in order to solve this case, you have to focus on the Blue Rock Springs incident where Darlene Farron and Mike Majot were attacked. And the reason I believe this is because Robert Graysmith, through all his extensive research, found one key point of evidence, and that is that whoever killed Darlene Farron had to have known her because the night of her murder, her father received several phone calls of just heavy breathing. Of course, this was the Zodiac. He also did this to Robert Graysmith for many years. Apparently, he received calls through the years of just heavy breathing. So, now that we know that to be a fact, I mean, there's no way around it. it, it the, due to the fact her father received those calls, the Zodiac had to have known Darlene. So, knowing that, the next question you have to ask yourself is, who in Darlene Farron's life would have done such a thing. So, Darlene Farron had a stalker. To put it into perspective, at one point Darlene, with her husband, decided to move to Albany, New York. Her stalker packed his belongings and followed her all the way to the other side of the country, getting a job in Albany and and all that just to be around Darlene. So after some time, Darlene decides to move back to the San Francisco Bay Area, which then her stalker once again followed her all the way back to San Francisco. So to put that into perspective, this man not only once, but twice followed this woman all the way to the other side of the country. I mean, that is stalking on a whole nother level like the the dedication is it's beyond belief i mean it, it's completely psychotic you know who, this gentleman is obviously extremely mentally ill so fast forward the night that darlene farron and mike Majot were attacked before the attack they were being followed that night and so by the time they got to the lover's lane on Blue Rock Springs. Mike Michaud turns to Darlene after this went on for so long and he asked her, you know, who is this guy that's following us? And she looked at him and said, oh, that's Richard. He's just jealous. So Darlene Farron's sister had stated that Darlene had an ex-boyfriend named Richard who was a journalist. Just a quick little key point there to to throw that in there so so the name of Darlene stalker was Richard Gaikowski now one thing I will say is there are quite a few suspects who do match the description and and look very similar to you know the police sketch however this Richard Gaikowski is the first suspect when I seen his picture, I legitimately got chills in my spine. It's uncanny, the resemblance here. So, one, there, there's two key points to look at here. One thing is that the people who actually seen Zodiac's face all had one thing in common when speaking about him, and that's that there was something funny and off about his chin. And if you look at this picture of Richard Gaikowski, that's one of the first things that you can see is that there's something, you know, there's something weird. There's something off about his chin. And not just that, another point of evidence that's not discussed too often is that 
even though the sketch with the glasses is the most popular sketch, uh, it's known that the Lake Berryessa sketch is actually a lot more accurate to what the Zodiac looked like. And reason being, the sketch with the glasses was from the Paul Stein murder. You know, this was, you know, from the teenagers and from that night who seen this happen from their house, their home across the street. However, the Berryessa sketch was taken, was from a description from three teenage girls. So before Brian Hartnell and Cecilia Shepard were attacked uh, the same day on uh, at Lake Berryessa, there were three teenage girls that were you know, sunbathing, just, just being teenagers at Lake Berryessa. And there was a man who was staring at them, you know, pretty much, you know, stalking them. And they, so obviously this is a, you know, this is a beautiful, sunny California day. So these girls seen this man's face pretty clearly. So because of that, it's known that the Berryessa sketch is a lot more, likely to be what the zodiac looked like so and if you if you look at richard gaikowski's picture i mean you see the hair part and everything but one thing that's extremely intriguing and interesting to me when you look at a lot of the zodiac suspects a lot of them either look like one or the other sketch to whereas richard gaikowski looks eerily like both of the sketches it it's honestly uncanny if you were to take both of these sketches and put them together it would honestly look like somebody was sitting down and drawing richard gaikowski it, it's legitimately chilling to look at the resemblance is extremely uncanny another key point of evidence so after darlene farron and Mike Majot were attacked that night. The Zodiac called 911 and pretty much confessed to these murders. And Vallejo Police Department. I want to report a double murder. Yeah, I have your if you name, go one I'm mile east on Columbus Parkway, Public Park, you'll find kids in a brown car. They were shot with a nine millimeter Luger. I also killed those kids last year. Good. The woman, the emergency operator who answered the phone, her name was Nancy Slover. And so what she has stated is that the voice of the Zodiac will forever be implanted in her brain, which I, I fully believe. I can only imagine how scared and creeped out she was during this phone call. But we all know how it is. There's just certain sound bites in life, you know, maybe a speech or something somebody said that will stick in your mind and the sound of their voice you can literally hear it when you think about it so i fully believe that this woman you know other than maybe brian hartnell knows this man's voice better than anyone so sometime later you know after all the murders and this this was quite a bit of time later uh she was shown a recording of richard gaikowski's voice and she not only said that it was a match but apparently she was pretty adamant that it was the same exact voice that she heard that night so that's yet an, another piece of evidence that's just i mean bone chilling so remember darlene farron's sister stated that she had an ex-boyfriend named Richard that was a journalist, and Richard Gaikowski was a journalist. He worked at the Good Times newspaper in San Francisco. He, he, he worked at other newspapers during his life. Um, you know, he was a writer and an editor. That's that's what, you know, that's what he did. He worked at newspapers. And so this is, you know, just another little piece of evidence, you know, connecting, connecting that, like the Richard that our Darlene Farron's sister was talking about was Richard Gaikowski, obviously. There's no DNA evidence connecting Richard Gaikowski. However, the DNA that was taken off one of the stamps from the envelopes actually did match two employees from the Good Times newspaper. Now, I don't believe that those two employees had anything to do with the murders. I mean, it's possible. I don't think so. However, what that proves, though, 
is that whoever the Zodiac was had to have at least worked for the Good Times newspaper. Because if you think about it, I mean, you work at a newspaper, I'm sure there's pre-stamped envelopes around and everything, and he probably used some stationery at his job. You know, it, it, it makes the it makes sense, you know, it, it, the amount of evidence against this man is honestly, I mean, it, it's spine tingling. It, when I was researching this, cause for years I thought it was Arthur Lee Allen. I really did. But I, I went back into looking at this case and I was like, let me look at it with a logical eye and just see where the evidence takes me. And Everything that I looked up and seen and, and read and I mean, it, it's just insane on how much Gajkowski matches, you know, it, so I tried when researching this, I honestly tried to find something that would debunk Gajkowski as a suspect, but I really didn't find every anything, you know, everything that I looked up seemed to be a match, I mean, there, there's just so much evidence against this man, well, we'll keep going over a few of these things, but another thing is Gajkowski was a military man, thus meaning he had access to the military shops and, you know, could have easily bought these military boots. He's the same. He's the correct height. He's the correct age. He's the correct weight. He has the same shoe size. You know, it just goes, it just goes on and on. And one big mistake that I've heard when, uh, and a lot of people that discuss this case, I, I've heard this from quite a few different people, is that they don't believe that the Zodiac was somebody who had, you know, serious uh, mental, mentally ill problems. And I couldn't disagree more with that. I feel like one thing a lot of people do is they mistake mental illness for not being intelligent and this couldn't be further from the truth that is so so very untrue and it's a mistake that a lot of people in like not even just when it comes to this case but in life period i feel like a lot of people get mental illness confused with someone not being intelligent it's actually quite the contrary um if you've ever seen the movie a beautiful mind with russell crowe it's a true story about one of the most genius mathematicians and one of the most genius people ever to walk the face of the earth. Um, his IQ was like 200 or more. It was like off the charts. He wasn't just a genius. He was a super genius. I believe he won the Pulitzer and everything for his, you know, his work. And even though this man was a legitimate super genius, he was a paranoid schizophrenic. This man had full-fledged relationships with people who were not there. So to say that because somebody is, you know, a paranoid schizophrenic or are seriously mentally ill, so as we know, schizophrenia is a very serious mental illness, uh, you, you cannot rule somebody out as a suspect because they have schizophrenia or they're mentally ill and say, oh, no, the Zodiac was methodical and intelligent. There's no way. This couldn't be further from the truth. Um, and Richard Gajkowski, he was a paranoid schizophrenic. He had serious uh, mental illness issues, and I firmly believe that the Zodiac... Um, was schizophrenic. I, I, I firmly believe that in, in the way he spoke and the things he said it's to me that, you know, the Zodiac was se severely mentally ill. And like I said, Richard Gajkowski was a schizophrenic. So another key point of evidence here is, and it doesn't prove anything. However, Richard Gajkowski did live in Riverside, California in 1966 during the Sherry Joe Bates murder. So that puts him there at the right place and right time. Also, the times that Richard Gajkowski was admitted into the mental hospital lines up perfectly with the times that there was no zodiac activity and another little interesting point of evidence if you look at this cipher now i know that you can find a lot of different names in the ciphers if, if you dig hard enough however this is extremely intriguing so 
in this cipher here, you can see in a Z formation, it spells out Gaikowski. Now it's misspelled, but still, as we know, Zodiac intentionally misspelled words. And uh, Richard Gaikowski would, would go by Richard Geik all the time, or Dick Geik. And, um, you know, he would, his last name, he would spell different ways, even when he, you know, wrote in papers and stuff so this you know you can see the r in the middle and then a gaikowski in the z formation so obviously i i don't think and i know zodiac wouldn't just put his name clearly in the cipher for you to see however i believe he was being truthful when he said in the cipher is my identity and i believe this right here is him being funny you know and I believe he was telling the truth when he said his identity was in the cipher. I think this is it right here. I mean, come on, his name right there in a Z formation with that R in the middle. I mean, it's just just another piece of evidence linking this man to the crime. Let's do a brief overview here. So there's a, a few, quite a few different key points of evidence that point to Richard Gaikowski. However, I feel like it's the top three or four pieces of evidence that, in my opinion, really put the nail in the coffin that it was Guy Kowski. So just to briefly go over this again, Robert Graysmith figured out that whoever killed Darlene Farron had to have known Darlene because of the phone calls the night of her murder to her home. And as we know, Richard Gaikowski, as we went over, it was her stalker. This man followed her from one side of the country to the other. And he was stalking them that night. I mean, Darlene Farron legitimately looked at Mike Majot when he asked her who it was that was following them. And she, she said to him, you know, she told him who it was. She said, it's Richard. He's just jealous. And obviously the Richard she's talking about is the man who's been stalking her for legit years, who stalked her from one side of the country to the other. I mean, I honestly feel so bad for this poor girl. I mean, of course she was murdered, but I mean, even before she was murdered, she was dealing with a, this psychotic stalker, you know, for years. And that is so creepy, so creepy to have somebody that dedicated to stalking and following you, what that poor girl had to go through. And then for her to, to be murdered after going through all that is just absolutely insane. So that to me is the hugest you know, nailed in the coffin. Like, Darlene Farron literally told Mike Majot who it was that, that was following them that night. I mean, it, it, that's why I said when you look at this with a logical lens, you know, it, if Darlene Farron had a stalker, and her stalker was Richard Gaikowski, and she told Mike Majot that Richard was the man that was following them that night. I mean, in my opinion, I mean, there's no way around it. You know, that right there is such a huge, huge piece of evidence. And then you have everything else that matches too. You know, height, weight, age. You know, once again, the, the way his picture matches both of these sketches. Literally, oh my gosh, I, it's every time I look at at the the police sketches net, side by side with his photo every time I get chills it's just it's the only suspect that I ever when I looked at their their photo where I got chills and I was like oh my god that's him like when I look at this photo of Richard Gaikowski I get that feeling in my bones like oh this is the man who did it you know and then of course his voice matching perfectly with Nancy Slover saying that Richard, the recording of Richard Gaikowski was legit the exact same voice that she heard that night. So, I mean, being that we know these key points of evidence, I mean, obviously we don't know where San Francisco is with this case currently, but if they are not seriously looking into Richard Gaikowski I mean, I don't know what they're doing, and, you know, I don't want to say anything ill about the police department or anything, because, you know, we, we have no idea where their investigation is, but in my opinion, I mean, I don't know if we'll ever have, you know, solid DNA evidence or fingerprints or anything to, to match Gaikowski, but I feel like if this, if Gaikowski was really looked into by the police department. I, I mean, I just don't see any way around this. I don't see how 
you know, they they could be convinced anymore that that this man was the Zodiac. I mean, it, if you were a, a true crime junkie, like uh, you know a lot of people are, then as we know, when women are murdered, if they had a stalker in life. I mean, it's like a hundred percent of the time. That's that's the man who killed them. You know, if they have no enemies and they're a sweet girl and they're a good person, they end up murdered. Then chances are, you know, like ninety nine point nine, if not a hundred percent, it it's whoever was stalking them that ended up murdering them. And I feel like, you know, this is. I mean, I feel like it's honestly logic at this point, you know? We know that Darlene had a stalker named Richard, you know, it was Richard Gajkowski, and, you know, he followed her all the way from one side of the country to the other, and then, I, you know, he was following them the night of the murder. I mean, it's it's like, I mean, who else, who else could have done this, you know? And as we know, the person who killed Darlene Farron is the same person... Uh, who committed the Lake Herman Road murders and the Barry S and Paul Stein, they're all connected. You know, he knew information about the cases that nobody else did. So also whoever killed Darlene Farron, we know also committed, you know, the other Zodiac murders, you know? So, I mean, and then you got, you know, that, that Barry S sketch, man, how much he looks like that is just, I mean, it's honestly uncanny. It's, you know... Uh, it just it honestly bottles my mind you know when i found out about him as a suspect and, and looked into it i was like wow wow why is this not being talked about more why is this not being pushed more i mean this is in my opinion it's it's completely obvious that this is the man who did this you know and, and i've been i don't want to say obsessed I, I haven't like put like a whole lifetime of work into this case or anything being obsessed with it every day but for many many years you know I would go on my little binges and I would I would try and read everything there is to read and watch all the documentaries and everything and after years and years of you know pretty much reading everything I possibly can and watching everything I possibly can in my opinion this is this is who the Zodiac is. It was Richard Gajkowski. I, I, I never would have thought that in my heart I, I would have believed 100% in a suspect. I, you know, if you would have told me that, you know, a few months ago even, like, I, I wouldn't have believed you. I'm like, nah, man, I don't, I don't think any of us will ever know definitively who it was, but this evidence, it, I mean, it's just entirely too much, you know, I, I I feel like, like I said, hands down, like, the, this has to be the Zodiac, in my opinion, in my opinion, in my heart, in my mind, this is cases pretty much close to me, I feel like it's, you know, Richard Gajkowski is him, you know, and it's sad, because this man was severely mentally ill, and a lot of people had to suffer because of that, and lose their lives, and these families now have to, have to grieve, you know, you know, forever, you know, because they lost their family member at somebody who was extremely sick, you know, and uh, it's just terrible, man. It's terrible, you know. The the victims of, you know, they deserve justice, and the families of the victims deserve justice. And if there's this much concrete evidence against this man, then it should be, it should be heavily looked into by the police department. Maybe they can close this case already, you know. But you guys that are still here and listen, listening, I super appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. I would appreciate if you could hit that subscribe button for me. I super appreciate it so zodiac you guys you know you guys let me know how you feel in the comment section do you agree that it's richard gajkowski i mean i i don't see a way around all this evidence i really don't but you guys let me know how you feel in the comments mike mccobb signing out super appreciate you guys for listening until next time y'all take care